خلیفہ کے ہم ہیں خلیفہ ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا 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 خلیفہ ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا السلام علیکم اینڈ ویلکم ٹو دس ویک ود حضو لاسٹ ویک اینڈ مجلس اطفال الحمدیہ یو کے وہ آنڈ ود ناٹ ون بٹ ٹو ورچل ملکات ود حضرت خلیف المسیح میں اللہ بی از ہیلپر وی بگین آر ہائی لائٹس ود سیٹرڈیز کلاس دا فرسٹ آف دا ویک اینڈ ٹو ورچل اطفال کلاسز ٹک پلیس آن سیٹرڈے ایز حضرت خلیف المسیح دا ففتھ میں اللہ بی از ہیلپر پرزائڈیڈ فرام ہز آفس ان اسلام آباد یو کے while atfal gathered at London's Bet al-Futur Mosque. The hour-long event began with Tilawat, followed by short presentations, including a video. The purpose of Majlis Atfal Ahmadiyya is to prepare us in a proper manner. The second Khalifa, Hazrat Muslim Odd Razi Ta'ala Nau said, The purpose of Atfal Ahmadiyya is to complete the four walls of a building. Being part of Majlis Atfal Ahmadiyya has helped me to create the love of Allah and His Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in my heart. Assalamu Alaikum, Piyare Huzur, Ramadan Mubarak. May Allah bless you with a healthy long life. Amen. Ramadan Mubarak from me and my family. Huzur, please pray for us so that we can continue to be good wakfin or children. And Huzur, please pray for us that we grow up and serve the Jamaat. The second part of the class consisted of a question and answer session. Huzur, my question is, by the grace of Allah, we have so many books of the promised Messiah Islam, but they can be quite difficult to understand. Hazur, what would you recommend is a good book for young people to read first? You are quite right that there are quite a number of Muslim's books and most of them, they are very much difficult to understand. But there are some books which are easy to understand, right? Such as uh, uh, Ark of Noah, And uh, even Hazrat Muslim Allah Salatu Salaam has said that my book, uh, Hakikatul Wai, is in a very easy language and you can understand it. And it has been translated also, I think. Huh? So you can read these books. But just to develop and create interest in the books of Hazrat Muslim Allah Salatu Salaam, you should first start reading from the passages of those books which are of your interest. And you can see the content list. And for that even, the Jamaat has also made this easy for you by printing uh, and some selected excerpts and passages of the book, from the books of the Muslim Islam in the form of Essence of Islam, right? So they are in five volumes. And that covers different topics. So you can just take the book and see the topic of your interest and then read it. By doing this, you will develop and create interest in reading the books of Muslim al-Islam. And at the same time, you will increase your knowledge also what Muslim al-Islam has said or he wanted us to understand. with regards to our religion, with regards to our, our spiritual enhancement, spiritual level, and with regards to our knowledge and wisdom. Right? Assalamu alaikum, Piyari Hazur. Uh, my question is, what happens in Laylatul Qadr? The night of decree. You see, the Holy Prophet says that uh, During the last 10 days of, the, of Ramadan, there is one special night in which Allah Ta'ala accepts all the prayers which you are doing. But 
at the same time you have to be a true believer not that an atheist come to the mosque or a person who has never uh, offered um, um, prayer and only on the night of laylatul qadr he just uh, go into sajda and uh, he says allah taala accept my prayers no if you are a true believer and following all the commandments of allah taala offering five daily prayers regularly reading the holy quran practicing the teachings of islam then you can benefit from that night and as ali professor has said said that you should try to find that night during the last 10 nights of ramadan uh, in the odd nights that is 21st and 23rd 25th 27th 29th so even he did not precisely mentioned the night he says try to find laylatul qadr during the odd nights of from the last 10 days of ramadan eh yeah? so that is allah's promise that if a person is a true believer and whenever he is beseeching my help whatever whenever he is asking me and praying for his uh, all the problems i will listen to his prayers and accept his prayers right that is lailatul qadr but before that you have to be a good believer okay okay jazakallah huzur assalamu alaikum pyare huzur my question is ah uh, age how did you memorize the quran you see during our time we we were studying in in jamaat school in rawa so there was a special diniyat religious studies period where we were being taught religious knowledge of the jamaat and at the same time our teacher will ask to memorize some of the verses or the surah small surahs of the holy quran so this is how we used to learn and even in our atfal classes we were asked to memorize and there used to be a competition of uh, tilawat uh, hifz e quran eh yeah? so this is how we used to memorize and this is the best way but here we have half a zone class those who can afford to go to the half a zone class they should try to learn quran by joining that class and those who cannot then you should develop your own interest in the holy reading of the holy quran memorizing of the holy quran eh yeah? and uh, at least try to memorize last 20 30 surah of the holy quran and also remember that atfal of the age of 13 and above and khudam ul md as well should also try to memorize first 17 verses of surah bakra they right and also try to know the meaning of these verses because it's very important to know the meaning of the verses this is how you can increase your uh, faith and you can save yourself from the attacks of the environment and bad people right mm ji okay jazakla my question is what is your favorite memory from your time in pakistan why do you want to remind me of my memories in pakistan ha huh? the my our memories were that uh, in pakistan in i used to live in rabba we were the rabba is the city where the majority of the people living there are ahmadis and uh, when we were tifal we used to say salala to wake people up for fajr prayer and 
our atfal in each and every mohalla in each and every area where there is munsun atfal and rain they will you know, see recite salela before fajr prayer and it was a peaceful city it is it was i should rather say it was because now because of the interference of the the government people or mullahs the the peace of that city is just destroyed huh there were quite a number of good memories which if i start explaining it will take some time and even where to pick and what to pick is very much difficult for me <laughs> okay so exactly i will tell you some time later when you personally see me exactly okay my question is many people sin but then pray to be forgiven therefore are all sins forgiven you see allah knows better we cannot decide that that person will be forgiven or not even allah taala has said that i am the the malik and allah the god i know whom i going to forgive and whom i will not you see there was a story there was a person who was a very pious person he asked another person who was not that pious that uh, you since you are not offering five daily prayers and you are committing bad things you will be sent to hell the person who was not very much pious said that who are you to say that i will be sent to hell it is allah who will decide but the person who thought himself to be very pious and uh, or in another way he should say that he was quite arrogant in this regard said no it is definite it is quite certain that you will be sent to hell it's it so happened that uh, coincidentally both of them died at the same time right when the soul reached to allah taala allah taala asked the person who was uh, apparently very pious person that who are you to decide that who is going to hell and going to who is going to heaven it is me who has to decide i am i am the god all powerful and omnipotent allah right then uh, you you said to this person that he will go to hell and you we thought yourself to be very pious person and you will go to heaven so now now decision is in my hand so i decide that this person whom you were thinking will go to hell i am sending him to heaven and you because of your arrogance and uh, thinking that you have done so many good things you will go to heaven i am sending you to hell so now it is allah taala who decides who is going to heaven and who is going to hell but our duty is that we should try to follow the commandments of allah taala don't at the same time try allah taala that he will whatever we do we shall be forgiven and we shall go to heaven allah taala says that these are my commandments these are my injunctions this is my teaching this has been given in the holy quran if you are a true believer true muslim then to follow my commandments and injunctions right and then if you do it then it is my promise that i will send you to heaven being a human being you might commit some small sins that those small things will also be forgiven by allah taala okay jazakallah now time is over you have taken 5 minutes extra so that's all how many questions left ha huh? so they can write to me 
if they have any question they can write to me then i will answer them in writing through letters so now time is over okay jazakallah assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh jazakallah assalamu alaikum The following day a second UK at fall class took place this time in Birmingham after tilawat a hadith and qasida the young students were once more able to present their questions the first question was from a boy whose parents and family had accepted ahmadiyat he asked what advice would huzur give to new ahmadis around the world you you converted to ahmadiyat from sunni background yeah. right yes you already know what are the five pillars of faith and what are the pillars of uh, islam and iman hai eh? right you already know it you already know that uh, the, the holy quran is the holy book revealed uh, to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right and this is the final law bearing book you already know that the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the the khatmun nabiyin the 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 seal of the prophets right he is the final prophet law bearing prophet right yeah. yes so the only difference between an ahmadi and an and a non ahmadi muslim is that you believe that the the messiah of the age who was to come and whose advent was foretold and prophesied by the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has come and you have accepted him right why did you accept it because you already believe in the same prophet in the same holy book in the same religion so why did you believe in the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam why did you do bad because you knew that the prophecy of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the advent of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been fulfilled and you are obeying the commandment of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that whenever my mahdi appears you accept him right since you accept ahmadiyya there should be some significant change in your life style in in uh, in your life with regards to your religious matters people should know that now after having accepted ahmadiyya you are a changed person you offer five daily prayers if possible in congregation if not at least at home you can offer five daily prayers in congregation read the holy quran daily and try to find out the commandments and injunctions given in the holy quran and try to practice those those things which allah taala has asked us to do we shall try to do them and those things which allah taala has asked us to stop doing or they are prohibited you do not do it right so the a true ahmadi whether is a new convert or an old ahmadi this should be the basic thing that there should be a significant change which people should feel in him and that is to follow the true teaching of islam and be a practicing muslim offer five daily prayers do tilawat and try to learn more about religion and in this age the literature given to us by the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the best literature through which we can comprehend much better religious knowledge right so we should try to reach these these books because the literature of the muslim sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallallahu alaihi wasallam covers all the necessary teachings of islam given in the holy quran and in the hadith so we should try to read the books of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and try to understand the true religion a person who comes from 
other religious background from Christianity or Judaism or Buddhist, Buddhism or Hinduism, he has some problems to understand the religion. But being an old Muslim family, there should not be any problem for a Muslim family to start practicing immediately what the true teachings are. And that is what the Prophet Muhammad has taught us and has brought us. And it actually he came to revive the true teaching of Islam. Right? So we should try to be a practicing Muslim. Okay? Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah. Uh, my question is that, inshallah, after the coronavirus restrictions have lifted in the UK, will you carry on doing virtual mulakats along with the physical mulakats? You see, if uh, possible, it can be continued. You see, those uh, jam Jamaat members who are living in far off countries where I do not visit frequently, obviously, they might have virtual mulakat with me. But people like you, who are just living here 100, 100 miles from London, they can easily come to see me. Would you prefer to have a virtual mulakat or just physical mulakat? Physical mulakat is for, for you, it is physical. And for those countries whose uh, people cannot come to the UK easily with them, it is quite possible we shall have virtual malakat. Now, we shall have opened a new avenue. New doors are open now of this malakat. So it can be utilized later on. Okay. Right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bara Hazur, my name is Adil Ahmed Faruqi and I am 13 years old. I am from Birmingham East Jamaat. My question is, what should the daily routine for a tifl be? You see, the tifl age starts from 7 to 10. So a tifl of the age of 7 to 10 should try to regulate his life by offering daily prayers. Right? Sometime he may offer three, four, five prayers, but when you are 10, then it is obligatory on you to offer five daily prayers. Right? So the routine should be that you get up early in the morning, offer your Fajr prayer, and do Tilawat of the Holy Quran, even if it is uh, one ruku or two rukus, then if there's a time, enough time to get a short nap, then you can go to the bed again and have a nap for half an hour. Or if you have, have enough time, you can even sleep for two hours during, during uh, summers, then get up get yourself prepared for school, go to school, spend your day in the school. There you should also behave well with your fellow students. When you come back from school, do your uh, homework and also try to do some extra work which you are supposed to uh, read in the next day. Before that, you will have to offer your Zohar prayer. And if there is no time to offer between the closing of the school and reaching back, to, back home, then you should ask your teacher or head teacher to give you some place to offer your Zohar prayer there. And if the time is too short, then you can offer Zohar and other prayer together, right? And if there is enough time, then come back home, offer your Zohar prayer, or if there's not enough time, offer your Zohar and Asr prayer at home, right? Then after that, you should play for some time outside for one hour. If there's time, 
to play for one hour, then during summers you can easily play, right? For one hour, you play football or cricket or hockey or rugby or anything you like. Hmm? Then offer your Maghrib prayer. Then also study, try to st read some books, either religious books or other story books. So increase your knowledge and also try to read newspaper to increase your uh, secular knowledge. Then offer Isha prayer after having had your dinner and then go to bed as early as possible so that you can wake up early morning for Fajr prayer. Instead of wasting time on television or internet or iPad, seeing, watching so many nonsense things, eh? so <laughs> you better go to bed early. Eh? Right? <laughs> this should be your routine. Early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Jazakallah, hmm? Hazur. Okay, Salaam Alaikum. Beloved Hazur, my question is how can I be more self confident? How can you be self confident? You look very, very, very well confident person. Are you not confident? No, not that much. Are, are you not good in school? Your studies? Are you good? I'm pretty good. Pretty good. What is your position in the, your class? Second, third, fourth, fifth? Uh, probably like third. How many students are studying in your class? 30? 30. And you are uh, the fourth or fifth among them who is good in studies? Yeah, probably. Then, then the, it should be enough for you to get confidence. Huh? So you are doing well. Why you are worried? Right? And then also offer five daily prayers and seek Allah Ta'ala's help. That Allah Ta'ala give you more confidence and make you a good asset for the Jamaat and for the humanity. And uh, if you think that you, you feel shy to speak before other people, if that is, that is your question, then stand in front of a mirror and then speak loudly. Make a speech there. Eh? While seeing okay. your while seeing your face eh? in front of a mirror, then speak loudly. Then you will gain confidence. When you are talking to the people, don't think they are better than you. But it should not create arrogance in you. Eh? Right? <laughs> so there are so many things. Okay? Okay. okay. So when you are talking to your fellow students, just talk to them eye to eye. Eh? Open your eyes and see their faces always, eh? as you are seeing me now. Okay? Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah. My question is, how much time do you spend on your Friday sermon speeches? It depends on the topics. Eh? Sometimes it takes me 20 hours, 30 hours, 4 days, 5 days. Sometimes it takes me 2-3 hours. So it all depends on the topics. Right? When I have to find the references, then it will take me some time. When I have to write with my own hands the whole of the script, then it takes time. Huh? So. <laughs> So it all depends. So you can say from three hours to four days or 40 hours. Right? Okay. Okay, thank you. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Now time is over. Huh? Farad sahab, time is over now. So we could only answer 12 questions. Huh? Okay. Okay, next time they can write it to me with their addresses, so I will reply them. Okay? Jizur, Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Okay, Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum. Jazakallah. Allah Hafiz. Assalamu Alaikum. Hafiz. Those were highlights from two Atfal classes which took place last weekend. We now end with a final segment, a clip from this week's Friday sermon. Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih, may Allah be his helper, turned the attention of Ahmadi Muslims 
towards prayer during this week's Friday sermon. He began by speaking about the importance of the final 10 days of Ramadan. Allah Ta'ala ke fadl se aaj ke hum maay Ramadan mein se guzar rahe hain aur do din tak aakhri ashre mein bhi shamil hone wale hain. Aan Hazrat Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ne farmaya ek mauke par ke Allah Ta'ala آخری عشرے میں رمضان کے آخری عشرے میں جہنم سے نجات دیتا ہے پس ہمیں ان دنوں میں خاص طور پر اپنی عبادتوں کو سنوارنے اور درود اور استغفار پڑھنے توبہ کرنے دعائیں کرنے اللہ تعالیٰ کی عبادت کے بھی حق ادا کرنے اور بندوں کے حقوق ادا کرنے کی طرف بھی بہت زیادہ توجہ دینی چاہیے تاکہ ہم اللہ تعالیٰ کی رضا حاصل کرنے والے بن کر جہنم سے بچنے والے ہوں